Alrighty, it is 6.30. I hereby call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Sutherland Select Board and Finance Committee. Our first order of business will be to approve the minutes of January 22nd. Motion to approve the minutes of January 22nd. Do we have a second? Crystal, you're muted. I'll second it while she's there. <laughs> while she's muted. All right, we motion made and seconded all yeah, over the <laughs> <laughs> So close. All right, well, I'll, I'll second that we only need a two, a two out of three anyways. Yeah. So, second. I, I said that I can oh. hear you now. Okay. It's going in and out, sorry. All good. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Two nothing works, right? Yeah. <laughs> Two nothing. We can update it later if we need to. All right. We have a bunch of budget presentations today. First on our list will be assessors. However you want to do it is fine with us. Hi, I'm uh, Dave Gorski, I'm the Assistant Assessor for the Board of Assessors. And uh, presenting our FY25 budget request. Um, overall, the Assessors uh, level fund, um, except for under tax maps updates, um, the Tax mapper cartographics uh, quoted a price uh, for fiscal 25 of 2400, um, which is an increase over last year and the year before. Okay. Cool. So, uh, looking at an overall $300 increase. Yep. <laughs> Very reasonable. Yes. Any questions, Dan? No, this year that that is a normal cost, and it's you got to have it. Yeah. Is that an every two year thing or something? Is that why it didn't go up? No, last actually, year? it it did go up last year, but I didn't uh, realize it until it slipped by me. So this is really a kind of a two year increase, that percent. Yeah. Yes, that is a two year increase. Uh, last year, actually, uh, I think it was me at twenty two fifty. I think so. Nope. <laughs> I guess that didn't work either. All right. Um, I'm going to assume Crystal probably doesn't have any questions because we can't get a hold of her. So, all right. Um, looks very reasonable. Always appreciate you coming in with a, a nice budget like that. Um, we don't have any questions this time, so thank you very much. All right. Easy enough. Beautiful. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Only they were all that easy. All right. <laughs> thank you very much. Have a good one. All right, up next is going to be the Board of Health. Um, maybe we should do uh, the um, inspectors. All right, so. we will jump down to inspectors. Come on up. How's everyone tonight? Very good. You're wonderful, thank you. I brought the Board of uh, Permitting Coordinator, Deedian, through the meet. I met all the members. Hi. Nice to meet you. Basically, the budget, uh, the only thing I'm requesting is an increase for my um, local inspectors to plumb in and electrical are, are based on percentage and to catch them up with the other communities in that, which range from 50 to actually uh, East Long Meadow was, I think, 85 per inspection. Um, we always put in about 36 inspections, which we'll probably do a third of because I try to, if I am going to be gone for a week, I try to you know, take care of before and after, and, and contractors are very good about that, because uh, it's tough, uh, Mark being out of uh, Greenfield to even come over. So we try to take care of it, probably, I don't know if there's 10, so we're budget extra. And the other thing is, um, most communities now, for emergency, and I want to say I've been here seven years, and I don't think we've ever had it, not for me, I'm, I'm, you know, the salary, but based on the, um, alternate if I was gone and had to come out or the plumber and electrical inspector had to come out for an emergency um, between uh, four and eight, it would be, uh, based on a bit minimum three hours, it would be um, 150 feet for them to come out in an emergency. Gotcha. I think it was um, 
Peter Murphy probably two or three times and have it, but I don't believe he ever, I ever had to call him out here. It be myself who can take care of it. But to offer that to keep our inspectors, I thought it would be good if we could put it in the budget. Yeah. And that's a, uh, we budget for it, but if we don't spend it, it goes back into the goes budget. In, yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then, like I said, the, um, the fee for the alternates is, I want to say we, uh, we maybe use a third of it and it goes right back. But okay. just to have, if I was sick for a month or you know, something, it is there. That's, that's why we've kept it, I guess. Yep. No, that makes sense. <clears throat> and $50 an hour doesn't sound unreasonable for a professional, you know? Yes. Yep. 30 to $38 honestly kind of sounded a little low to me, so <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Um, Dan, any questions from your end? No, I think it's fine. Okay. Crystal is not on the phone anymore, so. Okay. Oh, you're there. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you, Crystal. Glad to have you back. Um, all right, that all seems very reasonable. And I just want to point okay. out, um, last year you bought code books and they were pretty expensive, and so I think the overall budget for the inspectors this year is going to be, a, we're going to see a decrease. Okay, so, okay. Oh, great. Sure. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. 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 How long have you buy code books? Three years. It's supposed to be every three to six, but we're, we're going on, you know, hopefully now they're saying July 1st, and who knows that we'll take on the 10th edition, but it's been two years that we're, two plus years we're supposed to. And that'll be the 2021. The, the only thing we do need to get every year is, is, I'm sorry, every three is the energy. That's mandatory, but the, the whole set of books is, save us money that way, I guess. How tall, how tall? And everything else is level. Yeah. Everything else looks the same. Okay. Yep. Wonderful. Another easy one. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Very easy. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Happen. Can. All right. Uh, let's do town clerk, and then we can come back around to board of health if they're. Down uh, from here. <laughs> well, let's let's. Um, Shall we move on to the DLTA discussion and come back to those? Yeah, let me, let me grab this and just uh, some people. Well, we start the DLE. DLT, okay. All right. So while you're doing that, um, we have this lovely form in front of us. DLTA, uh, for those listening, is district loan. Sorry, district local technical assistance which is a uh, program through the FERCOG. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, this is the thing that they, FERCOG came in to talk to us about six months ago. Is that the same thing? Or is this I mean, I, I think related, but um, I think they were getting some extra ARPA money, and so they were saying, hey, what can we do with right. that? Um, yeah, and this is sort of an annual, the state gives the regional planning entities a certain amount of money. All right, and you went through and you selected a couple of things that you thought would be a good idea. Yes, so let's see, what do we got? Um, public information and warning. So I think we're constantly trying to figure out how better to communicate with our residents. Yep. Um, and so this would identify what different towns are currently using, what's the most effective, and basically give us a good idea of if we're doing well, and if not, what we might be able to do better. No, I mean, that's great. We actually were just having a discussion about that a week ago. So. Yes, we were. So, yes. Lovely. So, uh, it's like an audit. Like, this is what you could do. This is what, it's not, we're not buying anything with it. We're just getting expertise on what we could do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, rural policy plan implementation. Have the FERCOG advocate on our behalf for regional projects. Yep. Um, emergency preparedness and response. Um, I mean, I think that you know we have a pretty strong emergency management program, but um, it's always good to stay on top of those things as as we've learned over recent years. Well, especially with the you know with climate change making things like floods more real, you know, more recurrent and much more likely to be severe and whatnot, so. Floods, ice storms, fires, pandemics. All those things, yes, absolutely. The good stuff. Snowstorms. Snowstorms. Snow storms. Snow storms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember. Um, <clears throat> municipal service sharing. Um, I had checked off facilities management of municipal buildings and grounds and human resource management. Two positions that 
we don't currently have, um, and we don't have enough of a need for a full-time position, but if we could share mm -hmm. somebody, that'd be great. No, we had had a discussion about having there be a, um, a shared like town nurse amongst the, the, the towns at one point. Would that kind of fall into this, or is this different enough that we want to leave that off of this? So I think that would be different enough, because I think we have... We have a shared public health nurse through the, and and Cindy, if you're on, feel free to correct me if I'm getting this wrong. But I think we have a shared public health nurse. Um, I'm forgetting the name of the statewide grant, but that we're in with Greenfield um, and, and a few other communities. Is that right, Cindy? Yes, that's okay. correct. Thank you. Um, and then. Uh, the last thing, yeah, the last thing was older adult services. Um, we're looking at senior center expansion, so yep, made sense to me. Yep. Um, basically, we can check off as many as we want, but we have to rank our top three. And this year is a competitive process. In the past, um, the FERCOG has just given funds to tried to give funds to every town, some amount of funds. Um, this year, they're trying to focus their funds uh, to have the most impact. It's just allocating money that we can choose from. It's, it's no effect on our budget. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. And they're looking to try to find areas where a lot of towns are interested in something. They can kind of pool resources and check off as many boxes as they can with a little bit of money. Okay. That makes sense. Do um, you have a preference yourself on how to order these? Um, so you have five checked off currently. Yeah. Six if you count both of the ones in municipal service sharing um, I mean I guess I would I would say um, the older adult services mm -hmm. public information and warning I kind of feel like for cogs can do the rural policy <laughs> implementation anyway um, yeah so maybe not that but um, maybe the municipal sharing then as number three yeah all right yeah I think facilities management would be so, so we're, we're thinking one, adult services, two, public information and, and warning, and then three would be municipal service sharing. Yep. Okay. Um, does that yeah, work again? That sounds fine. Crystal, does that sound uh, reasonable to you? Sounds perfectly reasonable to me. Wonderful. The only other one I thought, I don't, I don't, know, if it, I'm, I don't know if Jennifer was interested in the pollinator habitat stuff, but I don't know if we've done anything on that, hopefully. Is that one on the first page? Yep. Maybe we talk to her on the tail end of the list. Okay. If she's interested in it. Which one was that, sorry? The pollinator habitat plan. Mm. Okay. No, that would actually, that would be lovely. Yeah. If we, maybe not necessarily one of the top three priorities, but as a yeah. additional one, yeah. I, would, I would be behind that. Okay. And we have the town clerk on. Back that Welcome, Wendy. Yeah, Thank you for joining us. I don't know what I'm doing with my video. <laughs> Here. <laughs> okay. I think that's fine. All right. Yeah. We can hear you fine, uh, Wendy. Do you want me to, to go, or do you want us to just... Wait Yeah, why don't you start, Wendy? Okay. Um... Uh, the town clerk side of it, uh, would the, only the increase in salary would change? And you're you're just asking for the, the same amount as what the personnel committee is going to recommend, right? I, yeah, I usually uh, kind of stick right with what Heather gets because we're about in the same place on the classification or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. So, that that's usually where where I go. Mm -hmm. Or have been requesting, but yeah, it's the same as what every other employee gets that are non-union. Mm -hmm. I think the the biggest increase is on. Unless you have any more questions on the town clerk side. Nope, that all looks so good. Yeah. Okay, because the big increase is the elections, uh, 
the wages went up 53% and the expense went up 67%. And it's and it's just all due to the to new election laws and um, you know this presidential election this year. Yeah. So does the presidential election fall under this budget, or is it falling under the one that was passed last year? Uh, yeah, this would be this well, one. the the primary would be under last this current budget, but the this election is, is going to be under, under the next, next one. one. Yeah. November. Yeah. November. Yeah. Half of July. So, so the budget cycle starts July first, two thousand twenty-four. So this this right. FY twenty five includes. The state primary, the state election, and the local election, May of 25. Right. Gotcha. Okay, that makes the whole sense. All right, any questions, Dan? No. Crystal, any questions? No questions. All right. I, I will just as a parting gift, um, Heather's postage line and her line item is going up significantly because of the elections. Okay. Okay. And we'll talk about that next week. Yeah. Yep. With her. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you for that heads up and also for, you know, advocating on her behalf for that. All right. You're I welcome. Th I it, think that's all for me. Do you have anything? Okay. I just want to clarify, Wendy, is that, um, you know, wages are going up because of the laws that require just more work on the clerks and, and more, you know, um, early voting hours, vote by mail, right? It's not like there's a law that says you have to pay election workers more money. Uh, no, so the election, that those wages, I, you know, I get paid for my salary. However, you know, so the, the more hours you work during an election, I still stay the same. But what I what I real or what we're paying for is that you have vote by mail, you know, there's more work there than one person can do um, during office uh, in office early voting. It's also the same time that, you know, we're testing ballots. I you know, I'm doing all the stuff that we still have to do for election day. So it, it just, it's more help. And, and before it was mainly just for election day, now it's throughout the whole year. Okay, thank you. Do you think this is enough help, Wendy? You feel like? Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping it's a, big jump of using other people uh, than I have ever done before. Okay. So um, I, I think so. I think, I think we're good. Your best guess. Yeah. Any other questions from the select board before we, or from Jeff, before we move on? Well, all right. Thank you very much, Wendy. Appreciate all the work you do all the time, mm -hmm. and especially in election year. Thank you so much. <laughs> Have a good night. Yeah. You as well. Okay. All right. Do we have board of health? Um, I don't think so. All right. We will have to put them off until. Cindy, do you want to? I can. I can speak. I thought a member was going to be there. Um, the budget is basically level funded, but the biggest part of the budget, not really the budget, is the revolving fund, which pretty much drives what goes on the Board of Health. So it's been a little sluggish this year, <laughs> but everything else is, has been, uh, is, remains the same. And the two agents would get normally whatever COLA the employees get one agent is on the town budget the other one's on the revolving fund so that's not relevant as part of the budget discussion okay very straightforward very straightforward <laughs> dan any questions no. crystal any questions 
And I am good also. Jeff, anything from you? Nope. nope. Beautiful. Thank you for jumping in and uh, taking over. Uh, Cindy, we really appreciate you uh, doing that. We don't have to try to revisit next week. This is nice. All right. Uh, I believe that's it for all of our uh, new business. That was a lot faster than uh, I was expecting it to be. So. <laughs> 79. Excused. Yeah. I'm a little confused. You're more than welcome to stay. We would love to have you. I mean. I'm sure you would. <laughs> All right, uh, moving back on to old business. Uh, first thing we have is 23 Plum Tree. Um, this Saturday we had an open house. Um, I attended, there were lots of people there. I was actually impressed with how many cars there were in the parking lot, it was very well attended. Um, I think it went fairly well. People seemed to have you know mixed reviews and whatnot, but overall people were interested to learn and I think it went well. Jeff, you were also there, I heard. Yeah, I, I agree, I think that I, I think that we recognized early what the pros and cons of that building and location are. And I think that uh, at least what I heard, um, I was trying to walk around <laughs> and listen to people, is that they, they saw the good and the bad of that building as well. And so, um, you know, I thought, I thought it was great, the number of people that showed up, absolutely. Um, and, you know, I, I think that the challenge is going to be the timing and figuring out how, you know, we got to figure out the use of the space, the full use of the space, um, what grants we can get. Um, and I think that, you know, that's, I, I think that I'm, we're going to need to communicate with the, the senior center that they probably will not be moving in there when their leases expire and they will, um, need to find a, some other temporary <laughs> space because um, I just don't see how we're going to be able, you know, it's the end of January in three months, be able to yeah. do our due diligence. No, it, it, yeah, that, that, that's that's um, something we've mentioned in the last couple of times we've talked yeah. about it is this is not something that's going to happen overnight. Yeah, yeah, but I think I'm, I will make that clear. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I think that I think that it was it was really good. Um, one of the other things that I heard that I hadn't heard before was um, and it hadn't really thought about is if we buy the building, we'd take it off the tax rolls and that'd be about a $16,500 hit. But um, that, so that, I mean, it's not, it, it is something. And mm -hmm. depending on what's in there, they could be paying more for personal property tax or other stuff. But um, that was that was a new one. Uh, yeah, that's all I had for Plum Tree. Okay. Anything from... No, I think it's good thoughts. I mean, it obviously, um, would be it'd be great to be able to take it on, but there's a lot to think about, um, and um, you know, we want we want the scenes to have a good place, and it's going to take us time to figure that out. Um, and we'll have to wait and see what they can do. It's a little bit of a struggle for them to figure out for this year, but if they can find something temporarily and and, uh, and make it make it work, and we can continue to look at it, that's um, the best way to go. I agree. Crystal, anything you want to add? Completely agree. I'm really glad that we did the open house. I think it was a great, a great call. Thank you for suggesting that, Crystal. Anything else on 23 Plum Tree before we move on? Alrighty. Next up is select board updates. Um, I only have one. I went to this year's, I think it was the 15th um, annual um, international night at the elementary school this year. Um, it was absolutely fun. Just as much fun as it was when my kids were there. Uh, I brought my kids. They haven't been back for a couple of years and kept going, wow, this room is so much smaller than I remember it being <laughs> like it was in sixth grade. Um, it was really a really lovely time. I got to see uh, my daughter's uh, uh, kindergarten buddy, who is now not a kindergartner anymore, mm. which is amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, just a wonderful time, great event, so glad that we do it every year. Um, huge thank you to Vicki Palmer and Ben Barshevsky for putting that on. Um, really, it is a wonderful event, and I was glad to feel welcome to that. 
Um, that's it for me for Sweatboard updates. Uh, Crystal, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, I'm not sure you guys. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Um, it wasn't in my Google Drive, so I don't have to set it down for the cheating for South County DMS. Yep. So, that's all I really have for updates right now. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. I, I did see that in, invite in my email. Um, for, I believe it's the 15th or something like that. Yeah. It's a Friday, I believe. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt to make that. Um, we, we can all coordinate that via email because that's a planning thing, not a not subject kind of thing. Uh, thank you for bringing that, Crystal. Dan, do you have anything? Just an update, I guess, on the Mass Trails grant. Uh, we are going to apply. We've gotten some letters of support already uh, for a Mass Trails grant for a feasibility study for shared use path on basically on 116 from Meadow Street uh, through basically through town over the bridge by Sugarloaf and to the Waitley parking lot. So it'll just be a, a study to look at the feasibility of that, look at some of the challenges, look at put some put some numbers to it and see if it's something that uh, could happen. Mm -hmm. The section on the south piece from Meadow back to UMass is already on the Mass Trails priority map. So they said we didn't need to look at that piece from, from, from Meadow Street to UMass because it's already on their plan. Um, it's not funded, but it's, they've already agreed that it's a good place to do it. So what we'd be looking at is just connecting up to that endpoint and bringing it all the way through up 116. So we're excited about that. It's uh, due the first, and uh, we'll, we'll put that together as a match requirement. I'm going to see if I can get a quick request into the CPA about it, uh, but we can use hours as well. So I could I could donate. We could all have meeting time that we, we could donate to that and uh, cover some of the match. And the most, all the match if we have to. Okay. So that's, that's where that is. Great. Appreciate your ongoing work on that. That's sure. awesome. We were all very excited about the prospect of having the connection between UMass and Dunderland. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've been having discussions about Village Center and tourism and having people have a reason to come to Sunderland. And <laughs> what better than to be able to hop on a bike and ride your bike into Sunderland? Yeah. So, love it. Um, all right. I believe that's it for Select Board updates. Jeff, Town Administrator updates? Yes, I have a few. Um, the. Public forum slash charrette for the village center is going to be on March 28th. Okay. Um, so you, I will try to remember to <laughs> mention it every meeting between now and then because we got a little bit of time. But that's going to be uh, about, I think, 3 to 7.30 or 8 o'clock at night in the library. Um, a couple presentations, but come in any time. There will be boards and, and people to talk about uh, to explain what they are. And you said March 28th? Yes. Yep. I think it's a Thursday. Yep. March 28th, Thursday. Beautiful. Um, the second thing is I met with FRTA today. Um, we had requested a bus stop for Sanderson Place. So they came out. They took a look at um, North Main Street and... Uh, un unless the select board objects, they're going to put a temporary bus stop in. Um, it, it's, you know, sort of a lawn sign or a, a temporary thing. And if there's somebody stopped there, the bus will pull over. Or if you're on the bus and you ask for the stop, it'll stop. But otherwise, it won't. So um, just want to let people know that there is a new bus stop. It's um, kind of in front of Demos, I think, on the north heading north and then across the street sort of heading south so keep a lookout uh, and provide your feedback frta is gonna i think put their phone number on the signs but certainly feel free to reach out to me as well i um, want to hear what what people think of it wonderful that was thank you for taking care of that it was very exciting um definitely want to make it as easy as possible for our seniors to get around when they need to get around so yeah that's great um Two more things that I just wanted to mention. Um, one, when when do we want to <laughs> when do we want to think about insurance, health insurance, and um, I, I'm I guess I'm putting the budget together. We have preliminary cherry sheets. We have free cash, so we should have a fairly good idea of what the budget's going to look like, minus the schools, which <laughs> is a pretty major piece. Um, but we have a good idea. I mean, I think that I think that the schools are going to be come in under five percent. Um, 
So, you know, we can see what 5% looks like and, and assume that's the worst case scenario, but um, I, I guess I, I have, I'm somewhat concerned because I don't know what that number looks like yet. And uh, I guess I want to double check and confirm that there's a possibility of changing health insurance benefits if the budget requires it. Um, or I guess, do you want me to start that discussion? Or should I bring the insurance committee together? Should we wait and see? Like, hey, when, we think we when do we have to have that decision made by by town meeting or shortly? Um, I think it would be the latest would be April first because they have to get everything set up for July first. Um, so we tell them exactly it, what we want. Yeah. And so I feel like it kind of makes sense to wait to the very least see what the school's budget is, and then that, that informs what we do from there. Um, Can we make an assumption about what the increase is and couple that with the five percent and see what? Yeah, we exactly. Have? That that's what I'm planning on doing. Okay. Um, you know, I figure it's gonna. My guess is gonna be about eight percent for health insurance, um, and I'll plug that in, and then we can also. You know, look at what the two and a half percent increase of the employer share would look like on top of that. So, okay, well, hope um, I have to do my budget for next week, but I'll, I'll hopefully by the end of next week I'll have a, a a draft, we'll call it, of the of the operating budget. Uh, that's all I have. Okay, great. Anything else before we call it a day? Wait, no, anything else before we move into... Well, I, I was going to ask, since we don't need to and um, we don't have a member present, do we want to do it next week or...? Um, yeah, let's put it it's off and um, okay. we can discuss. Each member can discuss with you and you can then inform us all about whether we want to continue to have that discussion next week or whether we want to just um, table it. Okay. Um, but yeah, for, for today we can, we can not do that. Um, in that case, at this time, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, public comment. Mm. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Seven o two p.m. Jeff. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody.